my little shadows, it's me again, your master, the Shadow Reader, here today to grace you all with yet another one of my wonderful little videos about stupidity, reality, and genuinely everything else that I can sit there and honestly say probably will sit there and fuck me over in the end, but to be completely honest here, I truly just don't care anymore. If the Amazing Atheist has taught me one thing, is that it doesn't matter what your opinions really truly are, you shouldn't give a shit what people have to say unless you're fucking wrong. But even on that matter though, there are many things within society that I can certainly say that I can't stand, but for some reason I just feel like ranting like crazy today. And what exactly am I going to be ranting about? Well, to be completely honest, I don't really know exactly what I'm going to be ranting about. So I think I'm probably going to rant about some random stuff that I think are probably really unnecessary, but at the same time, you know, something stupid. Ranting about ridiculous things that probably don't even need to be ranted on, but I think I'm going to rant on it anyway. Let's get started with one of these kind of things. Candles. Candles are an interesting kind of thing to me. I like candles. I like burning candles. I like the flame it gives. I like the smell that it provides. And I like the fact of the matter that you that you can burn them and you can just enjoy watching them burn. I mean, when I was younger, I was a crazy pyromaniac in a sense. I mean, I wouldn't sit there and purposely try and burn everything to the ground, but I loved but I loved fire. I like the concept of fire. I like fire in general. I mean, hell, even though I'm an agnostic, I still burn candles on my altar because I enjoy how they look. I think it like, makes it look a lot prettier and things like that. <clears throat> but given that little fact here, why the heck is it that candles, if they're a different color, you know, why is it that they're oftentimes a lot more expensive, you know, for a stupid new color than it is for like the white ones? I mean, can anybody truly explain that to me? I mean, seriously, you could go to the Dollar Tree right now and get like a regular pair of white candles for literally under a dollar, or you could probably even go to somewhere else and probably get them cheaper than that. Yet when you go and buy like a pair of green candles or blue candles or black candles, God forbid, you literally have to spend like two or three extra dollars more just for that one stick of a candle. And don't get me started on pillar candles, people. I like pillar candles a lot because they last a long time. But with all due sincerity, it makes no sense. And here's the funny thing about it. You want to know something really sad? If you actually sit there and get one of those taper candles, you get the colored ones that you spent like, you know, eight or nine dollars on just for the just because you needed them for something whether it be for a ritual to the flying spaghetti satan or some stupid crap like that i i, I you know what you you know what you're doing you're being ripped off people you're being completely and utterly ripped off in so many different ways people I'm being straight here. I remember getting a pair of taper candles from Walmart for Easter once. And I think one pair of them were probably like black and the others were like green or something. And you know, that's, it looked really, really cool and everything. I like candles like that. But here's the thing that I say that truly shows that you're being ripped off. Like I said, for a pair of white candles, you can get, usually get them for relatively cheap, especially if they're taper candles. But here's what I wound up fi figure, finding out that I realized that those things were a scam. I actually remember taking one of them, a black candle specifically, and I wanted to see, you know, if it was like layered or something. So I took my pocket knife out and I started shaving it. And guess what I wound up finding? A white candle underneath the supposed colored candle. And it didn't take a lot for me to sit there and scrape all that wax off. It was literally a tiny, thin piece of freaking colored wax that literally was there. That was just covering a white candle, people. And, you know, it makes you think. You know, it, ma it makes me think. You know, why the hell is it that we're sitting there spending like five or six bucks on a pair of stupid green, purple, green, orange candles or some shit like that? When we're si when I mean, when when you go, when in all due sincerity, it's literally just a white candle just dipped and like a br in a different wax color. 
And yet they're charging people up the ass for it. Now, I'm not saying that's the case with every pair of candles. There are plenty of candles, I'm quite sure, that have, like, pure red, green, orange, or blue, or whatever wax. But that means nothing because of the fact that those are usually a million times more expensive. My main question is, why the hell does it cost so much? Why does it cost to sit there and get a different colored kind of candle when it's literally the same kind of product? I mean, it's not like they're dipping it in fucking diamond shit and things like that and selling it to you. I mean, I understand if it was a decorative candle that's not meant to be burned. I mean, I don't get the purpose of those, but still, I mean, it makes no sense. Why are candles so expensive to get? Why are they so, you know... Why do you have to waste your money on candles that aren't even completely colored? I mean, come on. It's a big freaking waste, people. It is truly a genuinely horrible kind of waste. But getting back to what... But, you know, that's not the only thing that's genuinely agitating. I mean, it isn't solely just candles that are the biggest issue out there. Let's talk about, you know, electronics, specifically headphones. Now, I have gone through more wired headphones in my entire life than I've ever dealt with, you know, with the having like Bluetooth headphones. And I'm so glad that somebody made Bluetooth headphones because I think those are the best freaking things out there. Those are probably one of the best investments you could probably get, you know, with a pair of headphones. But the one thing I, I never get is why exactly is it that headphones that you get, like earbuds specifically, break about a month or so after you use them. It happens to everyone. These things that you go off and you spend like 10 to 15 bucks at, at freaking uh, Walmart or something like that, and you get them, you take them home, they sound awesome, and you know, here's what usually happens when it comes to headphones like these. One side usually starts becoming quiet, and if you think it's because of wax, that's not the case. I mean, unless you truly are that person that never cleans your fucking ears, then you're, that's fucking nasty. You should do, you should clean your freaking ears. But still, though, I mean, it's usually whenever you have these headphones and everything that you sit there and, you know, you listen to your music, you got about a month into them, and then that's when the problems start happening. That's when the headphones really start sitting there and going off on you. You know what happens to you? They, they sit there and they start fizzling a little bit. You know, it, it starts fizzling just a little bit. And the next thing you know, you hear this really annoying buzzing sound, you know, every time you listen to music. It doesn't matter what volume you have it on. You're always going to have that n annoying piece of trash um, buzzing sound within one side of the ears. And then then things get worse with your headphones. You, you're, you're plugging them in and then they don't work. Or, I mean, they do work, but it's either they're quiet or they don't make any sound. And you have to sit there and kind of push a little bit or, like, move them, move them and adjust them so that they would play properly. And then, at the very worst, you know, you're sitting there, you're, you're, you're tired, you're ready to go to bed, and you want to listen to some music, and you plop in both your earbuds. And then, just as you're listening to music and everything, one of the earbuds stops working. And then you're left with just one earbud. And let me tell you, people, it's a big ripoff when it comes to these headphones. And I know this for a fact. I bought a pair of $5 um, earbuds at um, freaking Dollar General once. And I had that thing for like maybe two weeks. I literally was listening with those things for two weeks. And they were loud. They were good headphones. I mean, I guess you could say I should, you know, you know expect what I pay for. But this was just insane. I was listening to music and everything, and then guess what happened to one side of it? It literally started going quiet. I'm not joking. It literally faded out until there was nothing left to be heard. I'm not joking. My freaking one side of my earbuds literally faded out into non-existence. Can somebody please explain to me how logical that is? To have a pair of earbuds that sit there and fade out. Now, I could have easily went and, you know, returned them. But why would I want to? Why would I want to sit there and return a broken pair of freaking headphones only to sit there and get another pair of probably the same kind only for them to sit there and burn and, like, do the same thing? 
But you know what? Something I genuinely hate the most when it comes to headphones is the fact that you sit there and you try and take as much care of them as you can. You don't do anything to sit there and try and break them. You do what you possibly can to make sure of it, that they are like wrapped up properly, that they're put on the side. It doesn't matter how well taken care of you keep those headphones because eventually they're going to go kaput on you and you're going to question yourself wondering why. Like, why did this happen? I took so good care of these things. I cleaned them out properly. I kept them on, like, a freaking, its own freaking hook to keep it from getting tangled. I never moved around too much with it. I mean, that's usually the worst part about it. And, and you know what's extremely sad? There's often times or not that the cheapest Headphones that you get are oftentimes the better ones you could buy. I'm not joking when I say this, that I have a pair of Dollar Tree headphones that I got from the dollar store. They were pretty much Apple earbud mock mock-ups. But I guarantee but I'm gonna tell you this right now. Despite how tangled up those things are, despite how many times they have been dropped, how many times they've been probably crushed underneath my body, how many times they probably sat there and been pulled at numerous times, the two of them, they both work perfectly and they're loud too which is a rarity when it comes to freaking dollar tree headphones and it makes you wonder if dollar tree headphones like those can sit there and actually sound great and work amazingly without any issues and these lasted for months i've had these headphones for nearly six or seven months now and they have not broken on me they have not failed on me and i have done so many things with those headphones i the headphones i had i literally threw them in a drawer one and they got so tangled up I thought I had to cut the wire just to remove them and even after getting it untangled they still work to this very day and it makes you wonder that goes to show you people headphones like these are literally ripoffs you might find a good pair every so often that might last you a couple of months maybe but guess what they'll ultimately break on you in the end and it's really sad when you have to sit there and deal with dollar tree headphones that work longer than that 25 dollar pair of freaking earbuds that you got from Walmart so moral of the story here people buy bluetooth headphones hell go to five below if you if you have one there they sell freaking awesome kick-ass Bluetooth headphones that are loud and don't fray and don't tangle up for literally five bucks. You are getting the best kind of deal with those. I have one pair from there and I have a pair from the Dollar General and they both work beautifully. Invest on a couple pairs of those. That way if one of them ever fizzles out, which shouldn't be for a long time, but if they ever do fizzle out, you got another pair to last you for at least another couple of years. I have literally had Bluetooth headphones that have lasted me for years on end, and I'm proud of the fact that I had them. Now, of course, this isn't to say that blue, all Bluetooth headphones work equally, because some of them don't, but still. Now, let's move on from the candles to the headphones, and let's talk about, say, fast food. I love fast food. I think we all do. But... You know, it, it would be nice and everything if fast food didn't sit there and shrink their fucking sandwiches. Every fast food joint with the sole exception of Burger King, and you all know how I feel about motherfucking Burger King. Every restaurant has literally downgraded their food. It is tiny now, people. You, The Big Mac? I remember getting a Big Mac and it used to be the bigger than my fucking head. I used to remember getting one of those, and they were giant. They were genuinely a Big Mac. When you look at them now, they are so tiny, they, they're not even the size of my palm. They are literally less than the size of my palm. And my palm is small. My palm is not a very big one. But they've literally downgraded so much to the point they are tiny. You don't even know what you're getting anymore. And it's not just Big Macs. I mean, Wendy's, um, Sonic... Uh, what else? McDonald's, obviously. Uh, literally any re fast food restaurant that isn't Burger King is literally downsizing their food. So you're basically paying 7 or $8 for a tiny baby cheeseburger, a small thing of fries that probably won't even fill you up, and a drink. That's literally all that you're getting. And even if you get the, like, you know, the deal, like, say, the 5 for 4 at, like, rallies or the 4 for 4 at Wendy's, 
or like the six dollar meal deal at like McDonald's, you're still n not getting a whole lot of food. I mean, maybe it's my own thing, but whenever I eat like fast food, I always try and get the biggest kind of thing I could get. The main thing I get at McDonald's is the double quarter pounder with cheese, no onions, Dr. Pepper, and large fries. That's the number one thing I always get. I've been branching off a little bit, but you know, I always try and get that because at least that one, even though it's gotten smaller, at least it's more meatier. At least it has more protein and everything in it. That way I don't sit there and you know, I'm not starving after five minutes of eating it. But I'm not joking. Many restaurants sit there and screw with their customers. Like I said, the only restaurant that hasn't done that is Burger King. Burger King, even though I am not a fan of it, I will give Burger King a lot of credit. They don't small size their sandwiches. They don't sit there and pussify their meals. They sit there and they have kept to the tradition of keeping a Whopper as being a fucking Whopper. Not like a baby Whopper. Not like a Whopper, you know, being like the size of a deck of playing cards. No, that Whopper is the size of a freaking human head. It is huge, people. I've eaten my plenty fair share of Whoppers, and I will admit, it's a guilty pleasure for me. I like it. It tastes good. I mean, they could go without having all that fucking mayo on there. And that's another thing I'm going to be talking about, about fast food. But even on that matter, I mean... Even then, though, Burger King has literally been the one re fast food joint that has literally given the middle finger to the fast food corporations that say, downsize your meals for money. And Burger King's like, no, no, fuck you, bitch. We are not doing that shit. We're going to keep our burgers big because we want to keep our fucking customers big, bitch. That's literally the kind of thing that, you know, Burger King is extremely respectable for. They aren't downsizing it. They're sitting there keeping their sizes the way that they they were since the fucking 60s. Probably earlier than that. But still, though, Burger King has literally been keeping up with that. And I seriously have to give them a lot of fucking credit for keeping up with their sandwiches. Because you know something, if they didn't, there would be no more respect for the fast food company. But... Let's get back down to another issue with fast food. Mayonnaise. I don't mind mayo. Provided that it's not on a cold sandwich. If it's on a cold sandwich, I'm going to puke. That stuff is nothing more than an oily, disgusting spread of whiteness. Seriously, cum tastes better than that. It tastes better than that mayo spread shit. It tastes better. It's saltier. It's creamier. It's better. And I'm not exaggerating that, people. I know it's gross, but it's fucking true. But one thing I never understood, why the hell is it that mayonnaise... You know, wh why is mayo such a popular condiment? Why not fucking ketchup or mustard? Or better yet, why not salsa? Salsa is the shit. It makes your freaking sandwich go from zero to fucking, like, everything. And yet people don't sit there and think that way. And, you know, mayo in and of its own self, like I said, is nasty. I don't mind it on some sandwiches. Like, I don't mind it if it's on, like, say, a Wendy's. Actually, no, I can't even say that. I don't mind if it's, like, on a, if it's, like, mildly spread or, like, you know, conservatively spread on, like, a sandwich, a hot sandwich that, you know, blends in with the juices and the spices and everything. That way I don't have that nasty mayo aftertaste. You know, it, it actually tastes good. Or when you actually make it into like a special sauce, like fucking Raisin Cane's, that is some good eating there, people. Raisin Cane's is everything. I mean, if you're going to use mayo, you need to doctor it up, or you need to keep it plain and have it blend in beautifully with the spices and the food and the meat juices and everything that you're eating. I don't want to sit there and, you know, eat a freaking sandwich and have like a blast of, you know, white colored goop squirting into my fucking mouth. I mean, if I wanted to sit there and do that, I'd be sucking on a giant dick right now and swallowing every drop of fucking cum I can get in my fucking mouth. I'm not joking. If I wanted that, I'd get that there. I could easily go get it now if I wanted to. I don't want, you know, mayo literally squirting in my fucking mouth. That's nasty, people. That is disgusting. And it's oily, and it's not even good for you. Mayo is literally the most unhealthy condiment you could put on anything. But I'm getting on an anti-mayo rant. Let's get back to the fast food and why mayo is a huge problem. 
Every fast food restaurant you go to, it piles on the mayo like it is absolutely no one's business. You might as well take the, it's like the, it's like the employees take like a giant freaking ladle and dip it in the mayo and like splatter it on your fucking sandwich. I can't tell you how many times I've ordered Wendy's and there'd be mayonnaise literally squirt, splattered all over the fucking sandwich. Or if not, mixing in with the ketchup and like drizzling down. That is disgusting, people. I mean... I don't like ketchup and mayo being mixed together. It is an unholy abomination created by fucking Satan himself. You know, just to sit there and fuck with people. I've seen people sit there and put mayo on red beans and rice once, and I hate that. But yeah, it's a horrible bastardization to sit there and, you know, have disgusting globs of mayo. I don't want I, I don't want to eat a fucking cheeseburger or a bacon burger and like, you know, get a glob of mayo going down my fucking throat. I mean, I don't want to be tasting mayo all the time. I want to taste the meat. I want to taste this grease. I want to taste that sweet succulent juices that are being squirted down my fucking throat. I want to sit there and have that tanginess of the mustard and ketchup literally you're mixing in well with every ounce of food I'm getting in my mouth. I don't want a bunch of white stuff going in my mouth. Unless it's the other white stuff. Then that's fine with me. But still. It's nasty, people. And many companies are guilty of this. McDonald's is guilty. You know, freaking Burger King has its own fair share of problems with it. But even with, Mc but even with Burger King. Another commendable thing with Burger King. Is that it doesn't layer the mayo on there too much. Unless you want it on there. They know to give you a good amount. Enough to moisten up the food, but not over glob it to the point where it's spilling out of the fucking sides of your burger. They know how to sit there and keep the thing, you know, moderate. And even then, though, a majority of the sandwiches there don't even come with mayo. They either come with their own special sauce, like the stacker sandwiches, or they just come with the simple, basic sandwich condiments of freaking mustard and ketchup. And I have a lot of respect for that. Many companies don't do that. And, I mean, I could go along the lines of saying, you know, onions are freaking nasty. I hate onion. I freaking despise onions. The only time I will ever eat an onion is if it's an onion ring or is an onion, um, or if it's onion rings or if it's onion, like, fry, well, not fries, it's like deep fried onions. You know, like the kind of, you know, onion straws and things that you put on a sandwich. I'll eat those. But I will not eat a grilled onion. I will not eat a raw onion. I won't even look at an onion. Because if I look at an onion, I'm going to sit there and take that onion and smash its little smile off its fucking face. I don't care if people are staring at me. I will happily do that. Because onions are the worst. They make me angry. They make me sad. They make me wonder what life is honestly worth living anymore. It's bad, people. It's very, very, very bad. In more ways than one. It truly is. But yeah, mayo is fucking nasty, people. Unless it's like blending well with the stuff, fast food joints need to sit there and either limit the amount of mayo they put on there, or put it on the freaking side, at least. Have like mayo packets, do something that's smart. You know, like fast, like not even fast food joints, but like freaking other, like, you know, third party rest, fast food restaurants, third party fast food joints that are made by like mom and pop corporations. At least they give you like a packet. You know, where you can sit there and put as much as you want, or as little as you want, or none at all. I mean, the same could be said with the ketchup and mustard and everything, but still. I mean, come on. It's like, no. It's just, no, people. Mayo is globbing down the freaking sides. It's nasty. But my final thing I'm going to sit there and rant on. I've already ranted about all that other stuff, but I'm going to be talking about another thing when it comes to um, food. Food that makes me literally want to sit there and never exist anymore. And that's, and I already talked about it, but I'm going to go deeper into it. Onions. I don't get the appeal of onion. I'm not saying I have any problem with people who like onions, but I've never understood it. I've eaten onions in the past. I can't stand it. It is disgusting. I can't even imagine the idea of eating one of them. It's crunchy. That's not, not a good crunch either. It's like, it's not like a lettuce kind of crunch. It's like a nasty, like, bite-down pop kind of thing. Onion juice is nasty, and the freaking, oh, the 
tech the taste and the texture is wrong it is wrong people it is disgustingly wrong in more ways than you would think and you know one thing I, and another thing too i genuinely despise when it comes to onions is fast food places like mcdonald's they mince them up they make them tiny so when you're sitting there and you ask for no onions and they accidentally put a few on there you're not even able to really know. And whenever you do realize it, you have to sit there and get a butter knife and scrape that crap off. And what's worse is that they melt it in with the cheese, too. So you gotta sit there and scrape the freaking cheese off the burger just to get the onions off. And that completely defeats the purpose of you ordering a fucking cheeseburger. Thankfully, not every place does this, but a good portion of them tend to do that. Hardee's does this occasionally. Um, Sonic does this. And McDonald's obviously does it. But I mean, you know, it's one thing if you have onions and you have them in the giant round O's, they'll be easier to sit there and, you know, plop off. You don't have to sit there and, you know, scrape it off. You can just take it and throw it off in the freaking side of your car or something. Never do you forgotten and everything. And then when you finally pick it up, you get like sprouts everywhere. But still, I mean, ugh, nasty. They are disgusting. Onions are nothing good. The only time I ever think that onions are good is if they are deep fried. They're onion rings. Onion rings are the shit, people. They are either deep fried or that's it. I won't eat it any other way. I mean, that's it. I won't eat it any other way because it's that nasty. Or unless it's in a pasta sauce and it's so soft and translucent that I can't even taste it. I don't have a problem with that. And hell, I'll even use onion in cooking. You know, as long as it's cooked down so much to the point where I can't taste it and there's no crunch to it, I don't have much of an issue, but I still think it's nasty. But I'll eat it if it's like in a pasta sauce or something. But oh boy, people, it's not fun. It is never fun. Never once has ever it, has it ever been fun for me to eat an onion. And yeah, that's I guess the main things I'm going to be ranting about today. That's the only thing, because I can't think of anything else to rant on, so I guess I'm going to end the video with that. Um, I'm the Shatter Reader. Thanks again for watching today's episode. Uh, Otterton, roll the freaking intro, my man. Roll it out. Mm -hmm.